Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and welcome to another series or sermon of I Am Loved Church. For those of you who don't know, I film these on Sunday morning. I'm considering of doing it a little earlier so I can get it out by Sunday, but that's not for sure right now. And I appreciate you guys for watching. It's kind of a weird thing doing this, starting up your own church and stuff. Um, for those of you who want to start up your own church, my advice is this. And I probably shouldn't be giving advice because I'm still starting now. But if you want to take the advice that I've been given, um, the Lord told me this. And I hope that he really did tell me this because he said this. Preach my word. My word is enough. You don't need to read every book. You don't need to understand everything. You don't even need to go to school. Just preach my word. Anyone who has the passion to preach the word of God. God says, I anointed you. I called you. So preach my word. It's sufficient. It's enough. It's more than enough. It's where my power and my spirit come from. So that's what I've learned anyways. I went to school. I thought I had to go to school. I thought I had to get my license and all that stuff. You don't have to get a license. That's manly stuff. That's the worldly stuff. That's pride. That's boasting. Because the Lord says this. He says, I don't need you. I can use the trees to preach. I can use anything. God's omni, omniscient. He is everywhere. So for those of you who want to preach, just go preach, man. But I would say this much. You got to know his word. You got to know it. Not just know it by memory, but know it as application-wise. Meaning just... just meditating on you know a passage constantly over and over what does it mean what does it mean you know praying over it just really letting it soak in your heart because anyone can preach from right here anyone can read a book but god wants your heart he wants the word to be written on your heart so for those of you i would encourage you do it there's that much time you know we don't know when our time is up here and for those of you who are feeling lost and confused, my advice to you would be read the Bible. Stop reading all these devotionals and all these other books and stuff and going to these psychiatries and all this stuff and all this stuff. Just read the Bible. That's enough. He says the devil comes to sow confusion. But those who have the peace of God are sown, their, their minds are made right with him. So read the Bible, man. The Bible is enough. For some reason, we just we're so deceived and we're so influenced by this world. We think that the Bible is not enough. The Bible, you don't have to go to church. It's not a building. We have to actually. Here's one interesting things. An interesting. Here is an interesting thing for those of you who think you have to go to church. It's not going to church. It's having a personal relationship with Jesus. Jesus spent his time on earth um, with his disciples and with the people that he helped. He didn't just heal them and give them things. He spent time with them. Anyone who wanted to spend time with him, that is the very reason why God created us. Because he wants a relationship. And we want relationships in our lives. Yes, it's important to hang out with uh, believers, but <laughs> believers are not perfect. Believers are those who recognize their imperfection or it should be those but for some reason when we go into church we for some reason either us or the believers who think that they're made right by god so they're perfect or something or they act like they're perfect that's wrong we're all broken and we all should come to the church should be the most safest place it should be the place away from this world it should be a place where you feel loved you should feel it you should feel loved when you walk in the church. It's one thing when people tell you you're loved. It's another thing when you know that, that what they tell you is true. Not even if they tell you it, but you can feel that. And that's what church should be. You should feel loved by the other person. The other person should claim, man, I feel loved. 
not you say, oh, I love you, and not show it, or them not to feel it. That's one of the reasons why I left one of these churches, because I didn't feel love. They told me all the time. I was like, man, I don't feel loved by you. As a matter of fact, I feel like your enemy. Anyways, it's a different conversation. But the point is this. You should feel loved. You should feel like you could tell them the world. But we're imperfect people, and I understand that, and I know that we need forgiveness. We all do. But here's one thing that I'm learning. The thing that I'm learning is hang around people you want to be like. Hang around people you want to be like. If they inspire you, hang around them. Tune into their channel. Follow them. You know, be a part of their lives. You know, read their books if they write books, if they're famous or whatever. You know, follow them on Twitter or Instagram, whatever, Facebook. But if you don't want to be like them, don't hang out with them. Don't tune into them. There are many voices in the world, and you have a choice to who you tune into and who you tune out. So that's one of the reasons why I'm choosing very, not because I'm, I'm making a judgment, but I'm making a judgment call, such as, do I want to be like this man? Do I want to be like this person? Do, I, do they listen to me? Are they, do I listen to them? Just, you know, all that plays in a difference. The same thing goes with marriage. Do I want to marry this person? Is this person beneficial to me? Am I beneficial for this person? You know, look at the eternal goals. Stop looking at the temporary things. And for those of you who are living a Christian life or think you're living a Christian life and you're worshiping this world, I'm going to tell you one thing, man. The Bible says, don't store your treasures here on earth. Do not store your treasures here on earth. That is a promise. Who cares? Y'all keeping up with the Jones crap? Y'all planning for tomorrow when you don't even know what's going to happen for tomorrow? That's a worldly thing. And Jesus says that's where evil comes from. You can't turn one hair on your head white or black, but you make promises for tomorrow or for the next five minutes. It's a foolish thing. You have set yourself, your will and your plans above God. You have not surrendered to God if you have plans. It's okay to have dreams and hopes, but when you say this is going to happen, you have set yourself as God. And I tell you, that is not the truth. But if but you have your own choice, you can worship who you want, whether it's yourself or whatever. And a lot of people may feel like they never feel like they're good enough. But I tell you this much, God does not want you to ever feel that way. And that's one way that you can learn if you are in or out with God. Because if you're in with God, you will feel like you're good enough. You will feel filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with his love and his peace and his joy and his patience. But if you are outside of those things, out of the nine fruits of the Spirit, you are outside the kingdom. You, are, you have been divided. You have been branched off, cut from the vine. He says, unless you abide in me, you will bear no fruit. So stay in his word. Stay in his word. Many churches are becoming legalists. There's no grace. It's law, law. Everything's law. And there are important things about law. But as long as we're not breaking the main laws, which I would consider, I'm sure there's more, you know, not sleeping with animals or someone's wife or lusting, not coveting, basically Ten Commandments and stuff like that. And of course, the common sense laws, we all have them and we all know them. Love each other as you want to be loved. But then here comes the Pharisees, here comes the lawyers of this day, where they come with all these extra laws. They read all these other laws and say, okay, that's part of God's law too, because it's a Christian book. I tell you, it's wrong. The only laws that there is, is to love the Lord. And how do you love the Lord? You get to know the Lord. And how do you know the Lord with knowledge? And what knowledge do you use? You use the word of God. He teaches you. He says, my spirit will teach you all truth. But some people have took it into their own will to try to teach some other things. He says, be, be cautious of the doctrines of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. 
because they teach their own law and they call it God's law because they label themselves or they have a church. And we are so deceived by what we see. We don't see the spiritual, but Jesus teaches us, the Bible teaches us the spiritual and the physical. So you have to be very careful when you look at what you see. Big church, nice carpet. People pretend to be nice and pretend to love you. You have to be cautious of those things. Do they really love me? Are they seeking the benefit of who I am? Do, is it a place that I'm drawn to? Or are they trying to make me like them? And that's one thing that I had to watch out for. I'm like, dude, okay, 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 those are good, those are good. Okay, what's that? That's not part of the Bible. Oh, it's okay. No, it's not okay. That's not a part of the Bible. The Bible doesn't say that. But it's okay because we do it. It's okay. It's normal. We all do it. Yes, we all sin. But doesn't mean it's okay just because everyone does it. So my point to you is this. It's those religious people who think... Religious people are basically people who... They have a clique. And they say, unless you're like us, we don't want to be... Like, we don't want to be around you. Now, I understand that there's time and we don't have the time to meet every person in the world and spend all that time and be best friends with everyone. But the point is this. It doesn't mean that we don't have to treat them any differently. Religious people treat you differently because you're not like them. But Jesus came to save those who are poor and in need. Those who know that they need him all the time, every day, and that grace is a gift. Grace is God showing his mercy towards us, that we're all homeless and we're all deprived and we knock on his door, boom, 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 boom. I need food, boom, boom. I need shelter, I need clothing, I need this, please. I am broken and I am in pain. And Jesus opens up his door and he says, come, you've recognized who you really are, a sinner, saved by my grace that I opened up the door for you. By my mercy, by my kindness, I clothed you. But let me put a little more on that. For those of you who are Pharisees and don't know you're a Pharisee, this is what a Pharisee does. A Pharisee does something because they expect something in return. And when they don't get what they want, they curse the person out. Oh, I gave all this stuff to you, them. And now they don't show up to my thing. Or now they're not a part of my life. They just, they just use me. You've set yourself as God to say that you bless whom you bless when what you've been given is free. Jesus says, give as I've been given for free. God has given us breath. He's given us clothing. He's given us these bodies and these minds for free. You think that you're good? I'm not good. None of us are good. None of us deserve clothes on our back. None of us deserve knowledge. None of us deserve these bodies. None of us deserve life. None of us deserve anything. This is my church. This is my building. This is my business. This is my family. Mine, 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 mine. You claim those are yours, but just as fast as you've got them, God will rip it out of your hands. And even if he doesn't rip it out of your hands, he did take one thing that you don't have, which is peace and love and kindness. Not that you can give it to other people because it doesn't belong to you. It's because you have none for yourself. So be careful of the Pharisees of this day. And that doesn't necessarily mean they go to church. All the Pharisees are in church. No. Everyone can be a Pharisee, including myself. I'm not the wisest person in the world. Actually, I'm the most broken person. <laughs> At least I claim myself to be because I know my sin. I know how broken I am. I know how defeated I am by this world every day. I hear the vo I don't need demons. I don't need Satan. I don't even need people to tell me how bad and cruel I am. My sins tell me that themselves every day. I wake up, I hear the conviction and the guilt and the shame of who I am and just the dirtiness. I've had a realization this week when I was walking, when I was working and I thought about everything that I was thinking about. I guess I was in the spirit and I looked at myself and I was like, ah, 
I saw my thoughts for what they were. I saw my heart for what it was. And I was like, that's evil. Everything a part of me is evil. I started watching what I was doing and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm just walking around being evil. Everything I'm doing is evil. But I had not recognized that before because I was in myself. But now God's pulling me out of myself into his Holy Spirit, which he gives as a gift to you too, to see yourself for who you really are. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's just nasty. That's just disgusting. Why would I do that? That's so rude. That's so nasty. And I thought that I was so good. I thought that I was like, man, I was blessing people. Look at the good deeds that I do. Look at what I am. I thought I was just the greatest thing ever. Come to find out, according to him, when I put him on the side of me and not anybody else, not compare myself with anybody else, when I put Jesus right next to me, I'm disgusting. I am nasty. I am futile. I'm depraved. I am out of this world. And I come and bow down to the Lord that saved me from myself. And I feel this grace and this love, grace meaning that is uh, 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 something I don't deserve because I've recognized who I am and how much I need a savior. And some of us think that just because we're in a power of, of authority of some sort that we think that we don't need a savior. I have all money. I have all knowledge. I have all whatever you think you have. You're actually, Jesus describes you as being poor. Because he says you do not have me. He, you do not recognize that you need help. You do not recognize that you need a savior. Especially for you ministers out there, you need a savior and you need to go up on stage and you need to talk about your sin. But for some reason, we want to play church. We want to play church as if we're perfect. And then the whole congregation thinks they got to be perfect. And you wonder why no one comes to your altar. And you wonder why nobody comes and, and your church isn't growing. Because it's not your church. It's not your people. You are called to be an example. You are called to repent in front of everybody. To show your sin. And I'm going to show you mine first by saying this, man. I have slept around with prostitutes, with transsexuals. I have done drugs. I've been homeless. I have wronged people. I've stolen before. I have drunk out of my mind. I've been arrested, kicked in my face, jumped by my own friends. And I was still blaming everybody like, oh, it's your fault. It's your fault. It's their fault. It's their fault. Oop, dip, 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 them over there. Shit. I even hit my wife. I never, I'm never going to hit. I'll never hit a woman. I told myself that and I hit my wife. It's terrible, terrible. And I would deny it. I would deny it. And some of you guys are doing that. You're denying what you really are. You did those things. You slept around. You hit your spouse. You've lied. You've done all these things. Every single one of you guys do it. Everyone in church does it. Because you're afraid. And it's okay to be afraid. What it's not okay is to be in denial of who you are. You're a sinner. And you have no mercy. No one's going to show you mercy unless you recognize that you need help. And that's what God wants for you to do, not just right now, but he wants you to do that for the rest of your life. No one likes me. Oh, these people are that and this and this bold and that's worldly stuff. That's demon, Satan, that's nonsense. We are all evil. We are cursed. Since the fall of Adam, we are cursed. Every single person's cursed. And God says this to you. He says, anyone who recognizes that they need help, that they need a savior. I'm talking about you two pastor. I'm talking about you two ministers who lost sight of what you're saved by, running around telling everybody, whatever, judging them, you need a savior too. Every single person, I need a savior. I'm telling all of you guys. Get on your hands and knees and bow to a savior. We watch movies about it too. We watch and we listen to songs. We all even think we're our own saviors. You're not. You need to recognize you need one. 
We all need a savior. We all need to confess our sins. We all need to know we're not perfect. You're not perfect, but you will recognize when you confess your mistakes to God. Forgive me, Lord. I'm a sinner. Saved by your kindness for me. Not that I loved you, not that I did anything for you, but that you did everything and gave everything to me. To be honest, I didn't even know what I was going to preach about today. I just let it flow. Y'all need to destroy your time zones and your worship zones. Oh, we only, we worship for 10 minutes this time, and then we do this for this time, and this and this and that. That's Pharisee stuff. Jesus says he wants your heart. Let the Holy Spirit take you away, man. Because what man can't control, God's in control. Let God be in control of your life. Wake up and say, God, what do you want? What do you want from me? Because I didn't create my own will. I didn't create my own self. He created me. And if he created me, just like he created you and everything that we see and don't see, that means he's in control. And the fact that I'm, that I'm experiencing, you know, turmoil and, and, and just life sucks is because I'm rebelling against God. And you're rebelling against God. Your life sucks because you're rebelling against God. And you will not win. You, you, you're just not recognizing. You need to recognize that. You need to hear it. Man, I'm rebelling against God. The all-powerful God you're rebelling against. And you're fighting him. <laughs> rebelling everyone, everything. How's that working out for you? Y'all need to let it go and let God take control. Y'all need to surrender and stop being evil. Surrender. Help me, Lord. Help me. Every day I cry out. David, the book of Psalms, that's what I've been reading lately. He just cried out. He poured out his soul every day, all the evil, every day. Some of y'all even, he's, Jesus says this, he says, for some of you guys who think that you're good, that you think that you actually do something good, he says, how great is that darkness? How great. If that eye be evil, that whole body shall be full of darkness. But if that eye be good, that whole body shall be full of light. But some of you guys think that you have light when it's actually darkness. Some of you guys actually even think that you're good he says, how great is that darkness in you when you actually think and you actually believe that you're good? That's great darkness. But guess what? Jesus died for you too, and he can overcome any sin that you allow him to, if you allow him to. I appreciate you guys so much for tuning in. I want to do a little bit more videos, not just the sermons and stuff, but just more like confessions. I want to show you guys who I am, what I struggled with, that I'm just like you and that God can redeem anyone. He can redeem anyone. If he can redeem me, he can redeem anyone. And I am an example and I want to be that example for you. Not that I am perfect, not that I am God, but that I am saved by that who is perfect. And I want you to know that you're perfectly loved. God loves you so much. He loves you so much. Every day, pour, look around. Look up. For some of you guys, don't even look up. Look up. Go outside. Look at the birds. That's for you. For you, he wants to just bask you in his love. He wants to just, he wants to hold you. He wants to hug you. Some of you guys haven't gotten hugs in a while, even from your own spouses. He wants to just show you how much he loves you. This isn't just a sermon about punishment. This is a sermon about how much God loves you. And he showed that to you on the cross. Thank you for watching. And I hope that you feel, or at least that you're on your way, 
knowing who God is and feeling his love. God bless.